Well, hello there, everyone. We're here doing the lessons of A Course in Miracles, and I am here in Seattle. I'll give you a little quick view of my morning experience here. Pretty cool. Staying at a friend's place. Not in the RV right now, but we might be tonight, maybe tomorrow. I don't know. Just going with the flow. So we are doing lesson number 262 today. Let me perceive no differences today. Father, you have one son, and it is he that I would look upon today. He is your one creation. Why should I perceive a thousand forms in what remains as one? Why should I give this 1,000 names when only one suffices? For your son must bear your name, for you created him. Let me not see him as a stranger to his father, nor as a stranger to myself. For he is part of me and I am part of him. And we are part of you who are our source, eternally united in your love, eternally the Holy Son of God. We who are one would recognize this day the truth about ourselves. We would come home and rest in unity for there is peace and nowhere else can peace be sought and found. All right, that's lesson 262. Let me perceive no differences today. Another reminder of our oneness and our connection with our creator, the creator of the whole entire universe. Feels pretty good to be connected to that. All right, let's see what a year of forgiveness has to say about lesson number 262. Let me perceive no differences today. You are blessed beings indeed. I am that one you know as Jesus. In A Course in Miracles, it says there are no separate interests. Of course, one of the great burdens of your capitalistic society is that you have been taught that there are separate interests. You have to look after yourself because nobody else will look after you. You had better keep all your stuff together so that nobody can take it or threaten your security. This is demonstrated in your increasing poverty, increasing slums, and increasing environmental degradation on your planet. It is the constant taking of more than you need, the refusal to share, and the refusal to give, even at times to your own family. We witness people who have very large bank accounts watch their family members suffer and struggle. We understand that some of you do help your family members and there comes a point when you see that it is pointless to continue to do so. We are not speaking about that. We are not speaking about when you have done your very best to assist others and they continue to fritter away money or waste in some way. And no matter what you do, there is no improvement. That is a different situation. We are speaking about the initial situation in which you see a need and you have the ability to assist, whether it is offering $1 or $100, whether it is offering a roof over someone's head for the night, or whether it's giving your precious talents to the world, sharing in that way. We are not always speaking about money. Ask yourself, where am I hoarding things? Perhaps you own far more than you need and you have a house full of thousands and thousands of things that are doing you no good. That is a form of security and self-indulgence that prevents you from being free to share your assets, your non-physical assets with other beings. You can become so obsessed with material goods that you forget about the non-physical world completely. Your creativity, being loving, sharing your talents and these sorts of things. I would say I had this thought come up yesterday. It's interesting. Um, not about where am I hoarding things, but what am I not sharing with the world? And um, where could I lean in a little bit more to, to be vulnerable and actually expose my truth? And um, yeah, I, I have a pretty decent sized collection of poetry that I haven't really done anything with. I've shared sometimes, so I'd like to sort of step into that a little bit more and um, channel my creativity and share my creativity more. So that's going to be my, the way I answer this question about where am I hoarding things. wonder what that is for you. 
Understand that you are all connected. Of course, this is the, rational, the rationale behind forgiveness. When you attack a fellow human, you are in fact attacking yourself. When you defend against others, you are in fact creating what you defend against because you believe in it. You put all your resources into protecting yourself and inadvertently create the very thing that you do not want to experience. This is one of those beliefs that's hard to grasp at first because you have been so indoctrinated into capitalism, self-centeredness, and individualization. You are all connected, dear ones, and if the only thing you can do today is think kind thoughts about your brothers and sisters, at least try to do that today. I am that one you know is Jesus, and we will speak to you again tomorrow. Well, that is easy homework. Think kind thoughts about your brothers and sisters. Okay. And there are no differences today. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope that these lessons are helping you and having you take a second look at things and love yourself just that little bit more each day as we grow together through this 365. All right. Have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.